It's an old, old argument, you know, kidney machines or theatre, defence service or theatre. The idea that it's either either is insane. That's kind of like the politics of a plate of biscuits. You can have the chocolate or you can have the digestive. No, there is a whole different way of looking at how we fund things and how society works. This whole notion that an economy works like a corner shop or an economy works like a household budget, which was foisted by, upon us by Margaret Thatcher, who started it, you can't take money out of the till if it's not there. Actually, economies are far more complex than that. And the idea that you can just, it's this or that, is nuts. Yes, you do need hospitals. Of course you need hospitals. That's absolutely insane. But to say you don't actually need industry, you don't need employment, to say that you don't need education is equally insane. And that's what comes with the theatre and an art centre. I mean, the th it's strange. Our, the percentage of our turnover that um, comes in the form of government funding is around 45%. Now, that's similar between us, between a major repertory theatre and the National Theatre. Roughly 45% of your total income comes in the form of government funding. Now that's not nearly as good as our colleagues in, say, Holland, France or Germany or Russia, who would be 70 to 85% funded by the state. But it's a lot better than the United States, where perhaps 10%, and in Australia, the Sydney Theatre Company, has only 7.5% of their funding from the state. So historically, uh, you can't say that England has led the way, but it's certainly been, you know, since the Attlee government in 1948 and the, uh, you know, Arts Council since the war, it's certainly been established. And I think that were it to be diminished further, there would be an outcry. I all signed up to um, to the idea of not calling it subsidy and calling it investment. I do believe that actually this that the money that theatre gets is an investment. Um, I don't think it can happen without it. I certainly not um, not touring theatre doesn't it doesn't make any sense. You can't you cannot make any money out of it. It's a very difficult line to tread because there's a populist end of, you know, I don't see why we should be paying vast amounts of money for, for people doing weird things that we don't understand, you know. Uh, so there's, there's that end. And yet, on the other hand, that voice has to be heard, has to have a place to be heard, you know. And on the other end, there is, I think, there is important, the importance of experimental arts, the importance of things that people don't understand. So you need to sort of tread those two. I believe that in a sort of perhaps locally based collective ownership of the arts, like artists' collectives and so on, perhaps you can accommodate both of those possibilities because there is no reason to exclude the most popular or the most experimental. They, they, and they do actually feed off one another in the long term.